Just give me Mark chapter 5 where we left. Can you tell your mind that tonight it's going to be past midnight? Can you tell your mind right now, settle down, it's going to pass midnight? I said, can you tell your mind, please settle down, it's going to pass midnight? You know, this was my, always my dream, that Lord, give me a place. You know, the reason I asked for a place was, Lord, give me a place that I can preach where there is no time. Because when I was in Dasya, we would go up to 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning and start again at 7, 6.37. And uh, now we have improved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let's start with 28, Baba. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now, did she see any evidence? Hello, could she see the blood in public? No. She felt she believed that that very moment a power of God went through her and she experienced the healing of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his... And his... And his... And his, and his, and his, and his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging thee, and you say, Who touched me? And Jesus looked round about to see, Jesus looked round about to see, ah, Jesus looked round about to see, so did Jesus know? Yes. He knew but he kept asking, who touched me? Who touched me? Who touched me? Now the question is, were the disciples touching Jesus? Yes. Yes. No, 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 I'm asking, were the disciples touching Jesus? You, you, you know when a big man walks, his bodyguards are all, hey, hey, keep this, hey. Don't allow. They keep the crowd away. So where do you think the disciples were? They were the closest to Jesus. And they asked him a question. Hey Jesus, you are saying who touched me? Hey come on, everybody is touching you. Everybody is touching you. Why are you asking who touched me? And Jesus, when did he say who touched me? Jesus felt the power gone out of him. Hallelujah. Do you see here, the woman did not even ask for the permission to get a healing. She touched him and downloaded the power. I said she touched him and downloaded the power. And everybody were doing the same. They were touching. But no power was going. Now, what was the difference between the woman and these people? and the disciples. Hey listen, just because you are close to Jesus, just because you are a disciple of Jesus doesn't mean you are all the time connector. You can be switched off any moment by your own sense knowledge. So in the spiritual realm, any moment your switch can be on and any time your switch can be off. It's all depending on you. Whereas this woman, her focus was only one thing. When I touch him, I'll be healed. And when I'll touch him, I'll touch him in secret that he will not even know that I've touched him. Because if he will know that I'm a, I'm a woman with bleeding problem, I will be in trouble. 
Because, because, because I, I, if I touch a common man, I will be stoned to death. But if I touch a man of God, a prophet of God, my God, the torture will be extreme. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus looked around, round about to see, to see, Jesus' eyes met with her. Praise God. That had done this thing. But the woman, hey, the woman, hey, the woman, the woman, did the commentator talk to her? <laughs> she thought, Jesus will never know. And Jesus turned around and their eyes met. And now, so quickly, the commentator spoke to her and she was filled with fear. This is the key. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Do you know what that means? A hundred percent guaranteed death on the spot by being stoned to death. Come on! Is it easy to confess? Come on, is it easy to confess? But when she received that healing and she came to know that Jesus, uh, Jesus is looking at her, she did not hide. She came out in the open to share the whole truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What would we do? Hello, what would we do? Brother, what would you do? It's not easy. When you know you can be stoned to death and the person who is supposed to give me the death sentence he is also present. The case cannot be uh, postponed for the next day, on the spot. Huh? You know what this woman did? She believed in the compassion of Jesus and therefore she fell before him and said, My life is at in your hand. I seek mercy. But when she said, I seek mercy, she told him the whole truth. She believed that Jesus has the power to condemn her to death but she also believed he is a compassionate saviour he is a loving saviour he will forgive me hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. and what did Jesus say Jesus got angry and said you unclean woman how dare you touch me and he beat her up and he punched her so much that she died that very moment Jairus did not even get a chance to send, put a sentence, stone her to death. Jesus finished her in one shot. <laughs> what would we do? Hello, what would we do? You know, you know, you know, Jesus is all excited. He, in fact, I, I, he would have been jumping in his heart and saying, Wow, I like that. I like that faith. Hallelujah. He's saying, I'm very pleased with you. Look at what he says. Daughter, my power has he made you whole. Daughter, my power. Daughter, my power. Daughter, my power. Now question, did she like a farmer grew a faith? Did she like a farmer grew a faith? Yes. yes, because the person who spoke to her about Jesus, that person is gone. But he gave her the seed and she took that seed and kept on speaking 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 and kept on speaking. Faith began to grow and Jesus said that faith with which you began to grow and came and touched me, now you are made whole. See, see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is Jesus. 
she touched and she would have gone she would have got only healed but jesus doesn't want her only partial blessing he wants the whole package for this woman because she was a woman of faith so he looked around because he wants to bless her and not punish her he wants to change her <laughs> hallelujah but when he looked at her it was now her turn to speak the truth you get blessed and become whole you speak a lie you miss your blessing hallelujah just just reduce a little because i'll be screaming a lot yeah praise god yeah hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you jesus thank you jesus see jesus when jesus wants to touch you he doesn't want you to get a small package he is looking for the whole package and when she opened her mouth and she spoke the testimony she spoke the whole truth praise god he said daughter your faith has made you see you got only healing in your body i'm talking about your finance i'm talking about your emotion i'm talking about your relation i'm talking about everything in every area that faith has given you the whole package because you confess your testimony when a person comes and testifies that's the time the person is not only healed that's the time the lord says because you testified i will make you whole there are many people who get their healing they get their blessing but they always want to keep quiet you know because what will people say or oh, what i went through it will be public so let me hide so they settle for a small package but those who are shameless for god is saying god i would have been in the pit dead but i will come out in the open and expose what i went through and share how you came into my life and made me whole and and and, and, and what you did for me when god sees that you are testifying again and again he said that faith will make you whole i did not know in my early days they would call me for testimony everywhere i would go they would call me for testimony and i would declare and share how miserable i was but my jesus went and brought me out of the pit and the more and more i testified i began to realize my life is being blessed in every area that's why not many people want to go and testify but they'll say what will people say imagine she would have touched and gone home she would have got healed but she would have still been broken and jesus said i don't want to settle for something small hey i want you to have the whole that's why laborers has god done something in your life yeah now come quick a quick question how many times do you remember it and share it with others and how much time do you remember your hurts and negative things and you share it with others which testimony are you giving what the lord has done in your life or what people have done to hurt you how do i know i hate somebody how do i know i have not forgiven somebody how will you know i said father in the name of jesus i bless my brother edwin and i forgive him in jesus name you know you know that there is a brother named edwin from nagarkoi i want to tell you he did tata to do in dunda don't tell anybody you know that brother was sitting in front edwin double battery <laughs> Have you seen that double battery? Yes. You did not understand double battery? Yeah, understand. From Bombay, who are they? I understood. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
you are very innocent brother no it doesn't matter now now what am i sharing the good things or the hurt things now no no let me ask you a mother has a child who is extremely naughty in school and the teacher said to the child get your mother and come so the mother goes to school and the teacher says all the things about the child now she comes back and she goes to her neighbor and says you know my child did all these wrong things in school will she say no no huh? no now the same mother the same mother her next door neighbor whom she hates her child did something and she went to school for some other reason and the teacher said that boy my god da 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 now when she comes will she go and tell everybody what that child did yes. why is that person saying because there is something hurt still remaining when a person speaks something negative about somebody that person is verbally forgiven but the choke is still there in your heart hallelujah thank you jesus oh thank you jesus so what did this woman testify can you ask your neighbor when was the last time you shared your testimony because the problem is we always want to share the testimony when we get a mic the real the real power is not when you get the mic and stand before everybody the real testimony is when you meet somebody one to one because that's how i started and that's how i got such a powerful anointing that god made me whole i had nothing god began to deal in every area now do you need to know the bible to share your testimony correct matthew knew because he experienced mark wrote because he experienced jesus Luke wrote because he experienced Jesus. John wrote because he experienced Jesus. Now, did you experience something? Go and preach your own gospel. What the Lord has done in your life. <laughs> Do you have a gospel of your own? Yes. Go and preach your own gospel. And when you now, what was the woman preaching? she was preaching our gospel of 12 years and she was saying lord how miserable i was thank god somebody spoke about jesus and i believed i had never seen you but i believed and i came in search of you because what that person spoke i believed and i came and she was testifying she was telling her, her experience about jesus come on tell me have you never had an experience of jesus in your life but which one do we remember the good things or the hurtful things you know the good things we can remember for one month praise god uh, thank you jesus one week two weeks after two weeks it's lo- it's forgotten but what about the hurtful things even after five years i can still scratch what you did to me five years back you remember what you did to me five years back hmm. should i tell them Now do you understand? I still got that memory brother what you did. But that was really nasty. We met only a few months back. Can you see how much he has changed? Yes. Can you see how much he has changed? Yes. Now no matter how much pressure I'm putting Hallelujah. 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 So daughter your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. No where you will find Jesus saying I've made you whole. So what do you need for your healing? Testify. Sorry. Your faith and testifying in faith and Jesus said go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now now Jesus was going to whose house And let me tell you if a woman is given a mic 
to share a testimony of 12 years. 12 hours. 12 hours? Imagine she's saying, then this happened, then she's saying, okay, then what happened? Now she's on the first month of her testimony. Now she's reached the sixth month. And 11, 11 years, six months are remaining. Then what happened? Then I went to this doctor. And then I took so this tablet and that, this thing, this thing, this thing. Then what happened? And what must be happening to Jairus? Come on, come on, what must be happening to Jairus? Listen, lady, you got your healing, shut up and go, don't make me angry. Because every minute that you are giving your testimony, my daughter is on the point of death, don't make me angry, I can finish you right now by passing a judgment, be stoned to death and you will be finished. What happens when you are extreme pressure, your daughter is about to die? Can you hold your peace? Connie, can you hold your peace? And look at Jesus, he must be asking, then what happened? Then what happened? It might be late for Jairus, it might be late for the family, but my Jesus is always on time. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! Do we get frustrated when things don't happen quickly that we are believing for? And what about Jesus? He is on his father's time. Thank you, Jesus. While he yet spoke, who spoke? Jesus. He was speaking to whom? The woman. The woman. They came from the rulers of the synagogue's house, certain which said, your, your daughter is dead, why trouble you the master any further? Let's say this woman must have taken half an hour to share a testimony. If I get a mic, how, how long will I share a testimony? Some of them are saying, Brother, sometimes you take a mic, you don't even stop for lunch till we start praying. <laughs> so, so, was time running out? Yes. And when Jairus hears that, what's, what's it going to do? That word has the power, that one seed, that one sentence has the power to destroy Jairus' complete faith and give up because that word said, game over. Your daughter is dead. That, that word said to Jairus, game over. Game over. Game over. What did Jesus do? Look at that. What did Jesus do? As soon as Jesus heard the word, as soon as Jesus heard the word. No, no, there are, there are different translations. I want you to open your Bible and see. Another, by another translation will say, overhearing the word. Another one will say, disregarding the word. Another Bible will say, paying no attention to the word. Another one will say, ignoring the word. How many? Five, five we got. Ignoring, paying no attention, disregarding, over the overhearing and there was as soon as no 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 in our life when we hear the commentary coming from somebody's mouth how do we respond you know what Jesus is teaching here hey Jairus you started it excellent you are on your faith and your faith is working no doubt about it but now you are coming to the climax when you are about to get and the devil has given his best shot and you got that message and that's why Jesus said as soon as he heard the word that was spoken Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue be not afraid only only 
continue to believe we can believe it over here and the next moment we see something there can be an unbelief no 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 isn't it strange Jesus is talking to the woman and 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 the servant is talking there but where is Jesus is years on and he, he wants Jairus' faith to work so quickly what is he saying Jairus keep your mouth shut just give me Matthew 6 31 Ah, you, you, you did not understand. You just read it. Read, read that again. That's the translation I'm looking for. Therefore, therefore, do not worry. No, enough, 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 enough. He is saying, therefore, do not worry. And then he says, don't say. Even if you have got some worry and the commentator is talking to you, don't open your mouth and make a declaration of what the commentator is saying because the moment you say that you activated the, 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 the seed of fear and you deactivated the seed of faith that is working for you. And here he says, therefore take no negative thought saying because it's a spiritual truth or a spiritual law negative thoughts will come but when a person opens his mouth and declares that means he has received accepted those thoughts and that's why Jesus is saying to Jairus listen Jairus I do not want you to open your mouth I want you to continue in the same faith that you came when you met me on that beach and now we are walking this seed has come to make you open your mouth and if you open your mouth you have lost your baby because you yourself have declared she is finished Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back. Now, do we get worry? Yes. Do we open our mouth and declare? Yeah. Do we get offended? Yes. Do we open our mouth and declare? Do we get angry? Do we open our mouth and declare? So, what did you plant? Because Jesus said, the word of God is a seed which brings life. In the same way, every word that comes out of a mouth is a seed that can bring death. So what's the game? The game is, the devil has to fire, a devil wants to put pressure on a mind that we open a mouth and speak the commentary is giving. And on the other side, we got to train ourselves, I don't care what I see, what I hear, what I feel, what I touch, I will continue to speak the word of faith. Is it right? Come on, is it right? That's why, that's why Jesus did not stop the servant, he stopped Jairus. He did not tell the servant, hey, listen, don't you talk that. No, no, he spoke to Jairus because Jairus is the one who is on faith. That servant has already given up. That's why he's coming with uh, the news. And let me tell you, when he came with that news, that news is a contagious virus. It has the power to spread. Because when Jairus said that word, my daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay hands on her and that she might be healed. The people were excited. They wanted to see the baby getting healed. And now comes the news that she's dead. And in everybody it comes what? Faith or the faith is dead. The faith is dead. Remember, faith is contagious. 
it spreads very fast fear is contagious it spreads very fast ask a question to yourself what kind of news do i carry everywhere news when i see everything is negative do i open my mouth and i speak the dead faith contaminated faith negative faith praise god be not be not afraid only believe continuously is it possible that we can believe in the morning and after one hour half an hour yes. next moment yes. and that's why he says only believe in bracket continuously <laughs> look at the next line i like the next line and jesus allowed no man to follow him jesus allowed no man to follow him jesus allowed no man to follow him hey come on yaar we came from the beach and we are so close to the house and now you are telling go home why is he telling them go home the contagious news has spread and jesus is putting all those with unbelief out of the place you sit with people who are full of unbelief that unbelief will kill you yeah that thing will work hmm because you will talk like them you will act like them you will be frustrated like them and jesus sends them all home except for peter james and john the brother of james and jesus comes to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and sees the tumlet tum tumlet tum tumult tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly eh, this tumult eh, are those people they are professional uh, mourners they, they 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 come when there is a funeral they will be paid to cry yeah they will be paid to cry and they will make you cry with their emotions with their with their crying and all that and 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 when uh, when jesus came to the house of the ruler of synagogue he saw them now now when jesus must have said to jairus don't worry do not be afraid just believe did they continue their journey yes now in jairus's mind was what doctor is alive dead i don't know will it happen will it not happen i don't know might be my baby had lost consciousness and they must have thought she is dead might be she has fainted they thought she is dead but now as he is coming close to the house and he sees them all crying now they are crying is speaking something yes come on they are crying is speaking something yes now now it is confirmed and still he has to keep his mouth tell your neighbor keep your mouth shut if you are not exercising in faith keep your mouth shut shut your mouth and when jesus came in he said to them why make you this ado and weep the girl is not dead but sleeping why are you crying the girl is not dead but sleeping now what do you think these people must have done they not only laughed they laughed in such a way that they began to scorn him put the next one they laughed at him and began to scorn him hallelujah hallelujah 
when a person speaks in faith and the other person doesn't understand those people laugh at you and scorn you make fun of you hallelujah but when he had put them when he had put them when he had put them no 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 whose house it is who is supposed to be in the in command and is he a chota man he is a senior officer man and 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 who is taking charge of his house there are many of us who are saying jesus come and do something in my house but when even jesus walks into the house you are saying jesus you take some rest let me go and talk but here we find jairus is not talking he is only remembering what jesus said don't be afraid just believe just believe just believe and what was he saying to believe when jesus would lay his hands on my baby she is made well she will rise up from the dead she will rise up from the dead she will rise up from the dead jesus you have to only go and touch my baby jesus you have to only go and touch my baby and these people are all laughing so jesus put them out did he interfere with them no 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 do you think in jairus's house were only those professional mourners there were no there were there, there were no they were not family members there were no relatives there were no no neighbors and all that and and jesus is saying and and they must be looking at jairus and jairus is not looking at them thank you jesus lord i know my baby is more precious than their unbelief and i'm not going to allow this unbelief to take my baby hallelujah thank you holy spirit let me give you a few testimonies then we go further my brother alred he has got a third child his name is daniel and i'm the god pa and this child began to grow everything was good absolutely good the child grew up and now he's two and he's three and he doesn't speak a word and all that he's doing is mm 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 so what will the what will the friend say your son doesn't speak your son doesn't speak on this day and when your son is not talking aren't you going to discuss is my son dumb come on so every time somebody would ask and say uh, your son doesn't speak no he is a prophet he doesn't speak in public <laughs> he speaks only at home yes, are you, are you, are you following and i and we would always say is prophet daniel never once we said he doesn't speak what was the physical evidence he doesn't speak for everything ah ah mm mm how do you feel you don't hear any word coming out of his mouth what comes to you god we named him daniel the prophet and he doesn't speak and continued with that word of faith what happens when you open his mouth and he started to speak now we have to tell daniel give us a chance to speak <laughs> he speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks he is gone on his god pa <laughs> he goes on talking and talking and talking praise god after that came another baby and this time sister pia delivered twins thank god for the nurses
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, please understand, there are some who are working, they are doing their duty, but the thirst for the word is there, so they are coming. The spirit is thirsty for the word, but the flesh says, I need some rest. So let's not judge somebody, okay? Okay. So, so, there was twins and the ninth month came and the baby was delivered. There were babies, there were twins. And when the twins were delivered, I happened to come on the next day. And when the babies were delivered, only brother Alred had seen the condition of the baby. One was big and the other one was like a baby from Somalia. And the doctor said, this baby will not survive. So next morning I came and Brother Alred took me and we went to see the baby. I can see with my eyes, the baby has no flesh. The baby is very small. The baby is ex absolutely weak. And everything in me is saying, the baby will not survive. I am seeing it, Brother Alred is seeing it. We come to the door and we speak, Ezekiel, that Lord, the prophet Ezekiel spoke to the dry bones and they came together. He spoke flesh and the flesh came. He spoke to the wind and life came. In the same way, Lord, we speak flesh upon this child. We speak your wind of your spirit upon this child and this child shall grow and be, and be a mighty man of God. Praise God. Now, what happens to the mother? When the mother delivers and she knows there are twins, they have told her there are twins and the mama sees only one child. Will she not ask for the next one? So what should my brother Alred share or say? What should, what should he say? Baby is in critical situation. You know what he says? The baby has little infection and the baby needs some warmth. So they have kept the baby away from this baby so that the baby cannot get infection but does not speak the real truth but speaks his faith. And it is only after six or seven days when the discharge time comes, the doctor says we can't do anything and the baby is taken home. Thank God for this nurses. God bless you. Everybody was given SMS. Mother is fine. Babies are fine. But doctors requested complete rest and therefore nobody is allowed to visit them. How do you like from the team when you are not allowed to see? Hello? When the babies come home and you are not allowed to see for three months, how do you feel? But supposing a person comes with unbelief and looks at the baby, what will the person plant? What seed will the person plant? So it's better to keep away and surround with minimum people of faith. Three months later on, they took the baby to the doctor and the doctor said, among the two, which one was that? Every day, the prophecy, every day, laying of hands, and it was only after three months everybody were allowed to see. My friend, when you know that there are people of unbelief and they are going to prophesy over your child, keep them out of the parking lot. When everything is over, let them come and see God's glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So Jairus said, the facts before his eyes. And Jesus spoke the truth. Which one should he believe? Is it easy to put somebody from the house out? And, and Jairus keeping his mouth shut and just allowing Jesus to do everything. Hello? When, when we want Jesus to interfere in our affairs, do we allow Jesus to interfere by keeping our mouth shut? When the commentator is talking to us, surely the commentator must have spoken to Jairus with what is going on in his house. Did he open his mouth? Tell your neighbor, when it is fear, keep your mouth shut permanently. When it is faith, then open your mouth. Others keep your mouth. And if you can't keep your mouth shut, put a tape on it. But when he had put them all out, he take the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is in, being interrupted, uh, interpreted, damsel, I say unto you, arise. And straight away the damsel arose and walked. For she was of the age of 12 years and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given unto her to eat. Praise the Lord. Now tell me, were there many chances for Jairus to lose this miracle? Yes. So let, if, if we put ourselves in Jairus' place, how many times do you think we would have reached the finishing line? Would we reach the finishing line? So who is our enemy? When we open our mouth. Negative thoughts will surely come. But when you open our mouth and speak those negative thoughts, we have destroyed that very faith that is supposed to bring forth a blessing. Amen. Now, we are going to study on faith. This is one principle. We are going to study another principle on faith. So please write down the notes and then we study the principle. And this time we are going to call another man a uh, testimony. The testimony is a man of faith. He's called the father of faith. His name is Abraham. We had a lot of trouble to call him, but he did accept our invitation and he is come. Hallelujah. Was Jairus good? Yes. What about the woman with the issue of blood? Yes. Amazing lady. Okay. God calls into being. God. Yeah, yeah. You write this. God calls into being things that do not exist. Therefore, as His children, therefore, as His children, we should imitate Him. Therefore, as His children, we should imitate Him by doing the same by doing the same we demonstrate our faith we demonstrate our faith when we refuse to focus when we refuse to focus on our circumstances when we refuse to focus on our 
circumstances. Did Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood do the same? Hello? Did Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood, did they do the same? They refused to focus on their circumstances. They focused on the word of God. Hallelujah. Refuse to focus on our circumstances. Instead, we focus on God. We focus on what God has said. Instead, we focus on what God has said. When we do, when we do, we will see, when we do, we will see the things we say, when we do, we will see the things we say and believe come to pass. The things we say and believe come to pass. God brings into existence God brings into existence that does not exist God brings into existence that does not exist and brings to naught and brings to naught things that do exist things that do exist brings to naught zero zero brings to naught things that do exist from the world's pers from the world's pers perspective, perspective you know my weaknesses I'm trying my best. You know, I, 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 I thank God for my weaknesses. Even though I'm so weak, but yet God loves me. Hallelujah. So, from the world's perspective, our faith in God our faith in God and His Word is foolish. Is foolish. Is foolish, foolish. The world will call when you believe in God and His Word, you are foolish. According to society, according to society, according to society, Tithing does not make sense. According to society, tithing does not make sense. Tithing. Tithing is when you give your 10% of your income to God. Okay, tithing makes no, does not make sense. T I T H I N G. T I T H I N G. Believers should not care. Believers should not care about looking foolish. Believers should not care about looking foolish to the world. God calls those things God calls those things that be not that be not as though they were that be not as though they were 
get god calls those things that be not be not as though they were it's going to be fun now hallelujah let's go to 1 corinthian 126 and 28 1 corinthian 126 28 for you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called praise god now now is there anybody who is foolish any foolish any foolish we know this foolish you are on the camera man be careful any foolish people you know what's coming on the camera growth retreat are filled with fools no 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 now who do you call foolish who do you call foolish has gone crazy okay but who does jesus call foolish <laughs> who does jesus call foolish jesus says the one who heard the word and did not do what my word said is a foolish man a wise man is a man who built the house on the rock the rain came the thunder came and the storm came and the flood came and the wind beat on the house <laughs> you know it was just did not i would be put pressure like this okay beat on the house and the house fell fell why did it fall because the person heard it but did not do the house fell hallelujah so who is a wise man a wise man is a man who heard the word and did what the word said so in a day how many times are we foolish so he's saying my brethren when you see your calling you and i were not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble but yet we were called supposing you got a job in a big company how do you you just got an offer letter in a very big company big salary how will you say i think after dinner to preach is really really <laughs> difficult even if jesus has to come and give you all the promises you'll say jesus can you give me one promise put me to sleep <laughs> hallelujah you know you know when you when you read this i was not wise i was not a wise man after the flesh i was not mighty i was not noble i was a gone case a worse man lost in the pit and yet he called me and 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 and, and because he called me he qualified me to be in his family you, you, you did, no 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 you, you, you hold on hold on you did not understand you did not understand listen listen when i was small as i told you i was a very good boy praise god there was this uh, mother who had an adopted child and she would be staying on on the ground floor and this boy would be going to school and his mama would take him and his mama would bring him throughout the year there would be umbrella where there sunshine winter rainy season whatever season the umbrella would cover the sun and this sun was never allowed to come out to play 
He was his mama's boy. Very delicate, very, very tender. And sometimes, very rarely, the boy would come out, just out of the house, out of the building, and we would come to know he's come. <laughs> and we would get out him, and in two minutes he has to say, I. When he would say, I, means he's calling his mother. We would be on a Ben Johnson. Everybody running, jumping the wall and on the other side. And if you go to the gents um, uh, washroom, if you see on the wall, we have got a design tile, small holes. And if you can see, you can see from there. But the person on the other side can't see you. Small holes. We would go on the other side and each one on that hole looking at I. The mother would come with a sari tuck on top and she would say, who touched my son? She was a terror. And we would enjoy that style. And at that moment, if anybody had to remain, that fellow is finished. Hallelujah. And I would think, when, when I was studying this word, I was thinking, Lord, if this mama adopted this child, see, 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 the adopted child is different from the natural child. When the natural child has a mosquito sitting here, the mama will do. But the adopted child, Because the child is very precious. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you. I am adopted child of my God. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. <laughs> When a child is not adopted, he is in one level. But when he gets adopted on a higher level, everything over there becomes his by default. So I was there in the deep pit, right there, no chance. And Jesus put his hand inside and said, come out. I've got something to tell you. I am adopting you into the family of my God. See, 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 see I don't know about you. When I, I read the Bible, I get very excited because those are my certificates. When I go for immigration, they ask me for a passport. In my real life, to get from heaven, I have to show me, I have the document of heaven. Especially you go and, you know, you can go to Portugal and get your passport, the Portugal passport, and now where, where are you running? To UK. Correct? I've got news to tell you, I got passport of heaven. Hallelujah. And not only that, I've got permanent resident visa of heaven. Only my ticket has not come. And the Lord said, the ticket I'm not sending because there's a lot of work for you in on earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 See, 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 when somebody wants to go to the Middle East, they have to give their documents for a job. And only when they pass the interview, they get a job. And then comes the offer letter and then you get the visa. Now, when it came to me for my visa of heaven, residence visa, I was not at all qualified, but my Jesus with his blood qualified me and got me into the family. That's what he's talking. What is 
talking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you believe who you are, you begin to live who you are. Praise God. I am called by God. I am called by God. Thank God people were not allowed to, they were not given the, the selection. When it comes to an interview, you see, for a job, some human being is taking the interview. But when it came to my adoption, there were no humans involved, only Jesus. That's why I got selected. If you were there, you would have rejected me. Because you would have seen who I am and looking at my, 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 my condition, you would have said, hopeless, no need, praise God. But Jesus did not say that. He said, I need you. You are precious to me. Come. And he selected me. That's why, that, 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 that's why, that's why, you know, when people say, hey, how do you get that energy, man? How do you get, how do you stand the whole day? You don't understand what, I, what he did to me. If you only understand what Jesus has done for me and what he continues to do for me, I want to tell you, I don't even want to sleep. Even if I have to sleep, I'll sleep for some time and again get up and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay, next, next. Say that I'm called by God. I am called by God. Okay. But God has chosen. Some of you might be looking at me and saying, he looks like a fool. God chose the fool. God has chosen the foolish, 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 the foolish. You can look at me and laugh, doesn't matter. <laughs> Hi, Frank, foolish. talking he looks very foolish or little foolish what were you telling her he looks little foolish or God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise God has chosen God has chosen <laughs> many a times, many a times it so happens, you know, when people look and they say, looking at him, he is, <sighs> thank you Lord. You know, now my things have changed from the time the center has come. Others previously when I used to come to Goa, there's one vehicle where these boys are, you know. There's one white color scrap Tata 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 mobile. Okay. So, so, in those days I used to be in the sound. Now I don't go much on the sound. So I would be the speaker man, the amplifier man and all those things and loaded in that and go to the church pick up and fix it all and everything sweating and all and if somebody has to say who is the preacher he'll be coming don't worry don't disturb me now and do all those things with all the sweat and then everything is over and the praise and worship is over then stand and they will say wasn't he the one who was 
doing all those things in Sri Lanka was I doing that before your husband took over tell me in, us, in Sri Lanka you saw me how, all, all, for so many years I was fixing the sound and when, when every, and that same night I have to go to the airport now put everything load everything put it in the truck take it home did, did this um, uh, keep it there and then run to the airport and this was my life hallelujah and when people look they say he is not qualified I know one place, you see, uh, all the youth had gone up, it was a youth meeting and I just got out of the car and I put the car at the side and, and brought the speakers and I, my, my, uh, God has given me a strong body, so all the heavy things will be on my shoulder, all the light things, others. So we put that and I came down to lock the door, now I am going up, the security fellow is saying, He did not allow me to go up because he thought I'm a driver and the, you know the one who puts the speakers and all he put me there so I sat down there so then the nun came down where is this brother I said sister what to do your man is not sending me she said he is the preacher send him <laughs> I'll give you a lot of incidents have happened that people have put me out I had gone to Kunur and, and by God's grace it's a miracle that I get every time to give a retreat to the cloister nuns. Cloister nuns are those nuns that even a priest or a bishop cannot go in. But by God's grace I get an opportunity to go and give a retreat to them. So that was the first time I was invited to Kunur and the sisters knew by name, they did not know by my face and there were two other brothers with me and one was very very talkative so he was going on talking uh, sister whom do you know and he's, you know he knows everybody from every place. You know this one? I know, uh, this one? I know, this one? Ah, I know, other than that, you understand? And I was sitting there. Now everything got over so the sister said please come inside and let's start the retreat to whom yeah, no, no. to that fellow and she, she said you two go and sit outside because you can't come inside and that person is saying I for retreat no 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 I'm not brother Johnson the one whom you put outside he is the one <laughs> so I used to say Lord every time I come down to Bombay airport and I'm coming with my bag, hey Allah bazu lage means take this fellow for checking and I'm saying Lord I <laughs> if I have to get down at Madurai airport 100% they will take me to the side they'll check my bag, they'll check me, they'll check this because when they take my passport they see so many stamps and every stamp is only two two days so, so what is this person doing? It is only when I come with you people, I feel so good. Because in the world, So, so in other words, in other words, everything in me is disqualified. But yet, my Lord has selected me. That's why I'm crazy. I'm crazy of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. With my biodata of past, no chance. But yet, the Lord has chosen me. Thank God for the selection party. Human beings were not there. Hallelujah. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 28. 
and the base things of the world and things which are despised as God chosen. Yea, the things which are not, the things which are not, the things which are not to bring to naught things that are. No, no, no. Please understand this. The things that are, he is going to bring it to naught. And things that are not, he is, bringing, he is going to bring those things into existence. Things which are there, let's say, cancer. Look at, look at, look at that, which are not. To bring, God is going to use things which are not to bring to to zero, bring to zero things that are. So let's say cancer. Is cancer there? Let's say a person has got cancer in his body. Is cancer there? Yes. Now he's saying, I'm going to take what is there and bring it to not. But to bring it to not, I will use something that is not to bring it to not things which are. You didn't get again, 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 again. Things which are, he is going to bring it to zero. But to bring it to zero, he is going to use things that are not to bring things that are to zero. And what are the things that are not? The scriptures. They are not in the physical. They are in the spiritual. So he's going to use the things which are not. He will use them and things which are there. He will put those things there and that will become zero. Okay, I'll put it this way. I had many bad things in my life and they were ruling over my life. So what is God saying? Things which are there, I'll bring it to zero. But to bring it to zero, I will use what? Not the things which are there, but the things which are not there. Are, are, are you following? Yes. So if there are things that are there in you who is threatening you, you can tell those things which are there, I just saw you and you are temporary. Because my God promised me that you who is, who is screaming and shouting and showing all that, I've got news to tell you, my God is bringing you to Zero. not. My God is bringing you to not. My God is bringing you to So let's say there is a person who has got demonic spirit. It's there? Yes. What will God do? He, 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 he says he'll bring it to not powerless. But to bring it to not, what will he use? Things which are not. And what are things which are not? The promises of God. So he's going to use things which are not to bring to not things which are there. Didn't get it? Didn't get it. So now now what what are what are we doing? Things which are there, when they threaten us, we open our mouth and speak things which are there. So now things which are there are multiplying and killing us. So God says, do one thing. Just the way I chose you when you are not qualified and I got you qualified, in the same way I'm the same God who will use my promises and if you can get them in your system, then what is there, I will destroy it by using things which are not there to destroy things which are there so do you have some things to bring it to not then I got news to tell you my God has promised us that he will use things which are not to bring to zero things that are there but the problem is when things that are there what are you looking at things that are there or things that are not just as he says when I chose you I did not look at the things that are strong I looked at you the things that are weak and when I chose you I put what I had into you and made you strong so if I did that in you then in the same way, all those things that are threatening you, uh, you got to open your mouth and tell those things, listen, my God has promised me that he's bringing you to naught, and all that I've got to do is tap into those things that are not, to bring it to naught, things which are there. So, 
So if you got some problems in your life, you can tell the problem, I just recognized you. <laughs> I got news to tell you, I'm sending a memo, you are not. But there are conditions applied. You got to apply things that are not. You got to apply things that He has promised you in His scriptures. You got to open your mouth and believe and speak those things. Then those things that are there, that are threatening you, He says, I will bring it to naught. So somebody is saying, Lord, if this formula is true, he said, 12 o'clock, Lord, bring it to naught right now. <laughs> I'm using scriptures, Lord, bring it to naught right now, that it stops and I can go back to sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 So when you understand this, get those things that are threatening you, now torture you. You had a question. You had a question. The nagging wife. <laughs> I want to. I want to know the duration. You, you, you had a question. You had a question. The nagging wife. Desert, so, desert. so uh, listen. So the nagging wife is there. The nagging is there in the wife. God says, if you can use what is not, then I can bring that nagging to not. Ha! The problem is, when the nagging wife is nagging, you are not using the scripture which is promised to you, and that's why you are also nagging with her. The nagging, nagging, nagging is going to multiply because you are not using what is not to bring to not what is there. Amen. All the ladies got happy, brother. Huh? My point was, how long must you stay in the desert? <laughs> you can stay in the desert, my friend, and keep on pondering on things which are there. Please look at this. This is a very powerful truth. You can be in the desert, you can be underwater, you can be in sky, you can be anywhere, but in your mind is things that are there, that nagging is going to multiply. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. That's why preachers are required. And thank God preachers are required. That's why I got a job till my last breath. No retirement. Hallelujah. 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 I've not yet come to the main match. I'm not yet called Abraham. You are already excited with this. Let me call Abraham. Hey, let me call Abraham. Can I call Abraham? Hey, can I call Abraham? Hey, hey, can I call Abraham? Hey, can I call? Can I call? Woo! Okay, let's go to Romans 8, uh, 4, 4, 16. Romans 4, 16. So I'm just calling Abraham. Where's my Bible? Hallelujah. Is, isn't the Bible a treasure hunt? Yes. No, no, just because you heard it, do you think those things that are there will come to naught? No, they will not come to naught till you use things that are not to bring to naught things that are there. So things that are not are the scriptures, the promises, and when you believe them and apply them, and those truth, you apply them, then God is promising you Things that are there might be there is a divorce going on, there is a separation going on, there is a financial crisis going on, there is a sickness going on, there is a, a, some bitterness going on, whatever is going on, I got news to tell you, when you use the word of God by faith, 
on those things and prophesy those things which are torturing you and declaring that they are going to come and kill you your very faith will go and swallow it hey. something beautiful man yeah holy spirit yeah now listen to this jesus said if you have faith then you can move mountains did you hear that okay enlarge it this is the big mountain that i'm going through a problem in my mind and i'm using the word of faith and how does a person use the word of faith Yeah, go ahead. At least one student is saying. Mm. Very right. The word of faith is when a person has the word in his mouth and believes in his heart. So he is declaring things that are not the scriptures. What can he see? The mountain, which is. there now when he speaks that word say for one week again and again and again is the mountain still there let's say the mountain is still there what will the mountain say <laughs> one week you have been saying and i did not even <laughs> so now one month went by what is the mountain saying <laughs> I did not even shake. You know what's actually happening? Faith always works from the root and not from outside. You know what's happening? The word of faith that you are speaking is going right inside the mountain and eating up the mountain just like you are making a boring in a metal. just like you are drilling a big hole it's eating up the mountain from inside what your word morning morning <laughs> and every morning it's come and every morning it's come and every morning and every morning the mountain is saying i'm still there i'm not yet gone and when you look at that mountain out of your mouth comes god i prayed so much and it did not work but if that person has to continue and continue and continue the day comes when everything is eaten from inside and only the shell remains on the outside and a day comes early in the morning when you get up you see the shell fallen broken smashed up and you begin to wonder god you answered my prayer today god is saying no child from the day you spoke i my your the word of faith your word of faith was eating up your mountain touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor hey the mountain is being eaten up by your word of faith don't you quit don't you quit don't you quit don't you quit hey don't you quit don't you quit Ask your neighbor: Is your mountain growing or being eaten up? Are you a mountain grower or a mountain eater? <laughs> Ask your neighbor: Are you a mountain grower or a mountain eater? What did you prophesy upon her? Hallelujah Can I call Abraham yes. tonight or tomorrow Now 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 Hey it's only 10 o'clock man Order to 
I'm looking at the things not seen. And because I'm looking at the things not seen, I'm not depressed. I am saying, my mind is saying, still a long time to go to sleep. What? He is seeing nine o'clock. He is saying, I can see nine o'clock. Hallelujah. Okay. Romans 8, verse number 16. Uh, sorry, Romans 4, 4. I love that 8th chapter. Something happens there as well. 4, 4. <sighs> therefore, therefore, yeah, yeah, yeah. The battery is weak. Really. When I go out of the range, Ask your neighbor, your battery is weak. But when you full charge. But when you look at things that are unseen, things that are not, your battery is charged. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. Romans 4:16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be. B, 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 by grace. So, is grace working like a magic? Does, does, does grace work like a magic? Yesterday we wrote the notes. So, grace works through how? By knowing the truth. Come on, yesterday that 500 rupees note, nobody got up from your seat. But let's say today I have to give you 500 rupees note, you will break my bones. Because now you know the truth and nobody will be. It is by, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. It might be by grace to the end. The promise might be, might be, might be, might be, sure to whom? Some seed. To some seed. Now, what seed? Not to that only which is of the law, but, uh, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Praise God. Now, now. God made a covenant with Abraham and he said Abraham I'm making a covenant with you and your descendants so when I'm making a covenant my promises are for you and your descendants praise God so this promise before the covenant was also for those who were under the law. Praise God. But now it is also for those of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all. Now, question. The people from Bombay, are you a descendant of Abraham? You are a descendant of Abraham? Okay. The people from Hyderabad. Yeah. Why Abraham came to Hyderabad? It's written through Jesus. People who believe in Jesus are the descendants. It's written somewhere, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, <laughs> smart guy. <laughs> so, so, the Goans, did Abraham come to Goa? I know the Portuguese came, that's why you get the passport. <laughs> but did, the, did Abraham come to Goa? Yes. yes. 
No, no, no. That, that, listen, listen, listen. Before we go to the promise, the devil will disqualify you and say, listen, you are not a Jew. Abraham was a Jew. And this promise is for the descendants of Abraham and you are not Jew, you are disqualified. Now Galatians 3.29 says, Galatians 3.29 says, And if you be, if you be, if you are baptized in Christ, united in Christ, in Christ, then, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. Done? Now, are we all qualified? See, when I come to Sri Lanka, they don't give me entry. I have to get a visa. Even if I say, please let me come in, they will not give it. But when you go to Sri Lanka, you don't have to ask, where are you going, where are the... They will just look at your top and they give you. But for me, they've asked me so many questions. Because you are a Sri Lankan, I'm an Indian. But when you come to India, they ask you a lot of questions. Yeah. And you have to also give a letter, invitation letter. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. But now in the same way, when you are praying, the devil is going to come and say, this promise is for the Jews. You are not Abraham's seed. But Galatians 3, 29 says, because I am united in Christ Jesus, through Jesus, I am not only Abraham's seed, I am an heir of all those promises. Amen. I don't know, I, I, I don't know such a big promise. Ah, it is sleeping time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. So please look at that scripture. And please give me the right answer. Let's read it together. Okay. As it is written, I will make you a father of many nations. I will make you. I will make you. I will make you. And what's the difference, Ray? I will make you. I will make you. I have made you past Come on, yeah, just a grammar difference, yeah. I will make you. So in our prayer also, when you pray in future tense and pastors makes a difference? Yes. 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 But it is only grammar, brother. I've made you father of many nations before him in whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. He believed. He believed. He believed. He believed. Now, to believe, what gave him the power to believe? Come on, yesterday we learnt it. The Bible says he believed. So what gave him the power to believe? Yeah, how did he believe? Look at that scripture and don't give me your own answer. Look at the scripture and give me the answer. What is it? What, what is it? You have already heard it before. You have not heard it? Okay. Now, 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 he believed. He believed. What gave him the power to believe? Vinod, you gave me a wrong answer, I'll meet you after the class. Josely? Hmm? You are so... 
I said he believed. What gave him the power to believe? No. No. Somebody said it. Somebody said it. Some We studied so much. See, for us also promise is given. But we find it so difficult to believe, right? Come on, right? You mean to say you don't have a written promise? You have a written promise. But yet we find it difficult to believe. But what? how did he believe? Look at that word before him. That word before him is very important. Okay, let me put it this way. God sent miracles after miracles to the Israelites in Egypt. Right? Right? Who was before God in the tent? Where were the people? Watching from a distance. Right? Where was Joshua? At the entrance of the tent. Where were the people? Now, what did I say? This man loves you too much. He's telling me, make him stand on the chair now. <laughs> now, now, what did we learn? To have a right? Now, what did I do? Cause friction among them. Uh, uh, sorry. Cause friction among them. Now, what came? No, he ended, 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 ended. ended, ended. He, you, you have changed, brother. Can we learn, please? Because every moment somebody will come and scratch you. Be vigilant. I'm using examples. I'm purposely doing these things. Okay, again. There are different translations before him, in the presence of God, in the sight of God. Only a person, like, listen, today, the whole morning, Brother Simon was talking about keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus. So, Abraham was all the time keeping his eyes fixed on God. Now, how does a person enter the presence of God? Sister, I know you got all the answers. If only nobody answers, then you open your mouth. And it is not only this, she answers all that I've thought. Amazing person. Okay, okay. How does a person enter the presence of God? Praise and thanksgiving. Now, if Abraham is all the time praising and thanking God, does he have any chance for grumbling, murmuring, complaining, negative thoughts? So what is God showing us? When I receive the promise, and on the other side is the pressure, how can I start believing? When I keep my focus on God with praise, thanksgiving, worshipping, word of God, prayer. If I'm not doing this, the enemy will surely take me out of God's focus. You know, many a times in my early days, people used to say, hey brother, thank you for coming. And I would say, listen, I've gone to tell you something. 
supposing you had not invited me for 10 days, do you think I would have been from morning to night doing this thing? I would be doing many other things. But because you called me, who's, who is doing revision now? So who is being benefited more than you? So who should thank whom? Who should thank whom? Who should thank whom? In, in fact, I should thank you because you came, my revision took place and I am in the presence of God throughout the day. I, 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 are you, are you for understanding? So, because some of them in their sleep suddenly are happening like this. When that suddenly happens, that fear will come. Don't do that. During the day you do, night time. And one person is saying, your preaching is excellent. <laughs> Hallelujah. All those who are sleeping, say loudly, Hallelujah! <laughs> what happened to you, Frank? Oh, Frank is saying, I told it purposely so that everybody would start laughing. The one who is sleeping also will wake up. Praise God. Okay, okay. Okay, coming back, coming back. Let's not miss this. Coming back. When I spend more and more time in the presence of God, okay. What question did I ask? What question did I ask? Every time I'm catching you. Now, now. When I spend more and more time with God. Huh? When I spend more and more time with God. What, what question did I ask? When I spend more and more time. No, that's not what I asked. <laughs> now, now, are they both sitting here? But what are they in my, are they uh, in my presence? All those who are sleeping. No, no, no. After that, I, uh, uh, after that, I asked a question and you both were looking there. I don't know what you all were doing together. Now, what did I ask? Now, you're not looking at me. What did I ask? Now, this is an example. This did not happen by chance. This is an example. They both are here, but their mind is distracted with something else. What? Correct? In the same way, I have the promise of God. And my mind is distracted with something else. So am I, even though sitting in the church, am I in the presence of God? Holy Spirit only is making them do that so that we get a good example. It's not your mistake. Holy Spirit only. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Abraham believed because first of all, God gave him the promise and second, he believed what? God gives life to the dead. Say that. God gives life to the dead. Say that. God gives life to the dead. Say that. See that? God gives life to the dead. So when he looks at himself, when he looks at himself, no chance, old man. When he looks at his wife, 89 years old. Imagine he can see his wife and is thinking, When she was young, tried and tried, but did not happen. Now, now, now tell me, tell me, you know why I'm demonstrating? So that you understand, understand that what God has given him a promise, it is something impossible. But you know what he's believing? 
God, you gave me this promise. I also believe you are my creator and I also believe that even if the organ did not work for so many years and it is dead, you are a God who gives life to the dead. You are a God who, is, who gives life to the dead. Now, that we, we heard that lawyer whose kidneys were dead and he was crying, but the same scripture brought life into his kidneys. The same scripture, the same scripture. God is a God who gives life to the dead and his kidneys came alive. So God does not only give uh, your organs life, He gives life to your marriage. He gives life to your children. He gives life anything that has gone dead. And Abraham what? Believed. Now if God gives life to the dead, do I believe that that same God is able to give life to those things that are gone dead in my life and I need them to come back alive. That's what he's saying. And the power to believe such a, such a promise is praise and thanksgiving. Now tell me honestly, even after he got married and he gets children every day, let's say he gets a child every day, can he still get a nation? But if the Lord says, I have made you father, or father of... Hey, forgot about one nation. He's saying father of many. Nation. He should have scratched his head and said, God, how many children? God, wholesale? Not wholesale. What, what, say, what, what production, man, that is... And, and, and even if he lives, he will not be able to see nations. But praise God, he believed. Today is he the father of many nations. So God's promise does not end there. It is infinite, but our mind is only for a short, short term. But when God speaks, he speaks from here to eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, 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 look at those things. And God calls, calls, say that calls. No, no, only say calls. Say that calls. Why are you sitting on a table? And why are you sitting on a sofa? Why are you sitting on a stool? No, no, why are different names given to things? Why are different names given to things? Because a name to a thing speaks about its character. You don't call a pen a stool. You call a thing by its character. And God is saying, He is a God who calls things. I have heard people call a dog, come here. I have heard a people called cat, come here. I have heard a person called a bird, come here. But I have never heard people calling things a chair, come here. But God is saying, I am a God who calls things. Who calls things. And he's saying, I am the God and I am created you in my likeness and image. So if I can call, then I who has given you the power and authority, I expect you also to call things. So can I call money? Oh yeah. Can I call job? Oh yeah. Can I call a life partner? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's on the camera, man. You all are clapping hands. Oh, now we know how to call him. Can you call health? Yes. Can you call sight? Yes. That's why you see, when Jesus touched somebody, he never called things that are there. See what he says. He calls those things which, which are not there as though they were there. So when he sees a person blind, he doesn't say, you're blind. He says, sight, come. 
when he sees a paralytic man he says you're not he doesn't say you're suffering from paralysis he says come on pick up your mat rise up and walk so jesus calls things which are not there as though they are there but the problem is we who are created in the likeness and image of god we call things which are there which are there Faith does not call things that are there. Faith calls things that are not there as though they were. Faith doesn't call the things that are not desiring. Faith calls things that are desiring. Are there some things that you desire? Are, you, are, are there some things that you don't desire to bring it to naught? Come on, there, are there some things in your life that you don't desire to bring it to not then you got to learn to call things that you desire to come to destroy things that are there to bring it to not so there are there's a cancer and you go around saying i got cancer i got cancer now what did you call cancer and, 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 and when you call things that are there, that, that cancer will eat you up. But if you can believe and in faith call, by stripes I'm healed, then you just call the healing that will go and eat that cancer and bring it to naught. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why in the book that you got, the white book you got, the whole book is about calling things that are not there as though they were. Might be you are a person who is very angry, but what do you call yourself? I overcome evil with good. Now might be you are having some demonic spirit and somebody said there's a demon in you. What do you call? I'm a body of Christ and Satan. Now do you understand? Now do you understand? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, listen. Some of you became happy. The mic went off. My, this mic doesn't go off. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 That's why in that book, what do you say? The one who is in me is greater than the one who that's why you see every line in that book is calling things that be not as though they were but now when you're calling those things are you using your imagination and making a blueprint on those things that you're calling I call this place to come I called those cameras to come. I remember those, those days when I used to sit at night and look at those cameras in a picture and talk to those cameras and say, I need you, come. I know when I went to Uganda and there are 11,000 people, the sound is not enough to take 11,000 people and we are going to have the next time 30,000 people. How are these people going to hear? And I, and I sent a message saying, please pray that we get a good sound system that can cover 30,000. And God gave me a, a wisdom. At that time from the mosque came a big sound and I looked towards the mosque and I saw the mosque is so far and I can hear the sound and that too absolutely clear if that sound can be clear let me see from where that sound is and how it is coming and I found it's a loudspeaker you know what I did I just booked a loudspeaker not one but four with the amplifier and everything it solved my problem because I called those things to come into my life All things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. We'll continue this topic tomorrow. And before you go to sleep, you know, you know, I, I always say to you, 
keep saying that Luke 4, 18 and 19. And what are you saying? The Spirit of the Lord will be upon me. Now what are you calling? Now what are you calling? Then you are saying, my God himself has anointed me. What, what are you calling yourself now? He has sent me to proclaim the good news to the poor. What are you calling you now? Your preacher, proclaiming the good news, the preacher. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. Now what do you call yourself? A deliverer. He has called me to declare sight to the blind. What are you calling yourself? The, the physical and spiritual healer. He has called me to declare, uh, to set the oppressed and the depressed go free. Now what are you calling yourself? Setting the oppressed and depressed free, the suicidal free. And to declare the year of the Lord's favor. Now what are you calling? A person who is calling for financial blessings. Now that scripture when you are saying, how many of you are believing that you are calling those things to come from the not to existence, to manifestation? When you understand uh, the principle, now you're not just saying, I am the body of Christ and Satan has no power. Because you never understood. When you understand, how do you call somebody? Hey! Now how do you call yourself? The commentator is saying, there's a bondage in you. There's evil spirit in you. And you're saying, I am the body of Christ. The commentator is saying, no, I am the body of Christ. And once you understand that book is full of those bullets, you will call yourself with what it is written there and start imagining and start saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Satan has no power, no place in me. Thank you, Lord. You are in me. Now what happens? Those things you called, which are not as though they were, will manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What's the time? It's only 11.30. I thought it was 12.20. So we got still time. Praise God. Father in heaven, help our flesh. Spirit is willing, flesh is weak. Lord, we thank you. Your word is a treasure. No matter how much we hear, it's still less. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty, for righteousness for they shall be filled Lord in these eight days Lord we came hungry and many of us totally empty many of us came with lots and lots of burden and lots and lots of negative things in our lives but Lord we thank you in a supernatural way by the power of your word the truth that you revealed to us the burdens were cast out and the yoke of the devil was destroyed. Lord, Father, we thank you. There is so much of joy. There is so much of peace. There is so much of strength, O oh Lord, when we keep our focus on your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to always be soaked in this relationship with you. Like Abraham, O oh Lord, teach us, even in the impossible of the impossible, hopeless of the hopeless, help us to keep ourselves in your presence, because in your presence, you show us the path of life. You show us the secrets of your kingdom. You show us and enlighten us and empower us and give us revelation and the mysteries and the secrets you unfold and you give us faith and belief. Lord, it is through praise and thanksgiving 
that we enter your courts but it is through the word that we enter the holy of holies it is your precious blood that cleanses us it your precious blood cleanses every senses and opens our spiritual senses lord thank you thank you lord thank you for keeping every one of us in good health taking care of all our needs oh lord and all these days have been absolutely smooth oh father every word that you spoke every example that you gave every illustration every parable was amazing you made this preaching and teaching so easy for us to practically understand we thank you thank you lord as you continue to teach us oh lord help us to apply this truth in our everyday life so that your grace that is given to us your promise that is given to us will never go in vain as we study from abraham tomorrow oh lord give us more and more deeper insight make it more and more practical give us the points so that we can memorize those points learn those points experience those points and use them in our everyday life we thank you for brother simon whom you brought today oh lord he spoke to us and you spoke through his mouth and touched our life thank you thank you lord for putting the mothers and fathers spiritual mothers and fathers who have been feeding us with your pure spiritual milk and it is through this spiritual milk oh lord that we are being nourished and we are growing and we are experiencing our salvation father we bow down to your lordship and we give you the glory there is nothing that we can boast to lord but we can boast of your love we can boast of you almighty god and we thank you we thank you we thank you lord that this has been for the first time in jclm and this is going amazingly successful lord without you it wouldn't have happened each day is getting better and better we thank you we thank you lord in jesus name amen praise the lord